Welcome to Still Speak Podcast. I'm back to continue this episode series about three little boys who were murdered in the month of May of this year in separate situations. And all three boys were not in the care of one of their biological parents at the time of their deaths. The last episode, we discussed Samuel Olson out of Houston, Texas. And in this episode, we're going to discuss the case of Amari Nicholson, just two years old, out of Las Vegas, Nevada. This beautiful little boy, as I said, is no longer with us. And this is how it all began. Amari Nicholson was last seen on May 5th, and he was reported missing from the 3600 block of Paradise Road near Sands Avenue by his mother, Taylor Nicholson. And Taylor said that she was in Colorado and she was there to take care of her mother who had been attacked by a dog recently. And Amari, her son, was left in the care of her boyfriend, Terrell Rhodes. And Amari's father lives in the Reno area, and he said during the search for Amari that he didn't have much contact with Amari other than a visit in person last year in Henderson, Nevada, and several video calls. Quote, I don't know where my son is. If anybody does, I just hope they can help me. Just tell us where he is, unquote, Mr. Hayes, Amari's father, said. Taylor Nicholson, along with her boyfriend Terrell Rhodes, talked to the media together about what happened. Quote, he got a knock on the door at 6 in the morning from a lady representing herself as Amari's father's sister. And then he, in the situation process, he's trying to call me to figure out what's going on. And I'm sleeping in Colorado, and I wasn't able to answer in time. So as he's packing a bag, she grabs the baby and runs out of the apartment. And by the time he was able to go out and find where she went, she was nowhere to be seen. Unquote, Taylor Nicholson said. And Rhodes said that he was expecting someone to come by. According to him... Taylor, his girlfriend, had said such. He said, quote, I mean, from my knowledge, I already was told, like, someone was going to stop by. Someone was going to, but I never knew who. So I still had that in my headset. Someone was coming by, unquote, Rhodes had said. But when Taylor Nicholson was asked if someone was supposed to come by, she said, quote, no. I never said anybody was coming by to get anybody But I did say someone would be by, unquote. And Taylor Nicholson said that she made this comment that someone would stop by after she had been arguing with Terrell, who she claims was upset that she was out of town. Quote, I said somebody would be pulling up and I'll let you know when, but I never said for what or anything. It was a misunderstanding. We had our little disagreement and I'm poking the bear and he's poking the bear back. So I let out the comment and coincidentally, it matches the situation that we're in. Unquote, she said. Uh, Given the story that we're going to be discussing, it probably wasn't wise to, quote, poke the bear, unquote, while your two-year-old son is in the care of this man, but okay. So, the sisters of Amari's father then spoke out because they were accused of taking Amari, and they said, quote, we've given police our doorbell cameras, they searched our homes, because the mother said that one of our family members took the son. The police told us they can't do an Amber Alert, so we've been working with the police to try and show them that Amari is not with us. We have not had contact with Amari in a very long time, which is why we are so worried, unquote. And they said this to the media, and these aunts were visibly distressed over what was happening. Quote, we are offering $30,000 to anyone that could bring Amari home. He is a baby. He is two years old. He can't communicate. He doesn't have anyone to make sure that he's safe. Please, if anybody has heard anything or seen him, please call the police department. Please, anything will help us at this point. We are desperate. We have nothing to go by. We don't even know what he was wearing when he went missing, unquote. This is what they shared with the media. 
six days after Amari was reported missing on May 11, 2021, Terrell Rhodes was arrested in the disappearance of two-year-old Amari Nicholson. Taylor, Amari's mother, told reporters on a phone call immediately after his arrest that he, quote, he killed my baby, he just confessed. I'm with the Metro Police now. We'll speak with you when I'm done, unquote. Las Vegas Metropolitan Police announced Rhodes' arrest, and Lieutenant Richard Myers said the missing person's case had become a homicide investigation. Quote, during the course of the investigation, it became clear that the circumstances were suspicious. As the investigation progressed, it became very clear to us that Terrell Rhodes was our suspect, unquote, Myers said. And Myers also said that during his arrest, Terrell chose to fight with police officers, and during the course of the fight, he was briefly able to retrieve an officer's firearm in the interrogation room that he was being held at. And after being disarmed, Rhodes said, quote, I want to die and kill me, unquote, according to the police report. Now, I've seen this video of when he grabs the gun. There was a table between him and the officer, and he lunged over the table and was able to get a hold of the gun as several officers were trying to get it out of his hands. It was a very intense moment. And so the incident was de-escalated and then Rhodes was transported to the Clark County Detention Center on murder charges and Myers ended by saying there will be additional charges. At this point, when Rhodes was arrested, Amari's body still had not been found. But the next day, on May 12th, little Amari Nicholson was found deceased. Quote, the defendant ended up confessing to Metropolitan Police detectives that he abused the child. He hit the child numerous times, causing his death, unquote, said the local prosecutor. And then he said, quote, he then ended up hiding the body after this occurred, unquote. Rhodes later told law enforcement that he was frustrated that the toddler had urinated on himself multiple times and soiled clothes were found in the apartment. Las Vegas Police Department confirmed they found the two-year-old's body near Twain Avenue, less than a mile from where he was reported missing. In a deleted Facebook post, Taylor Nicholson said she was betrayed by her then boyfriend, quote, my baby is gone and is never coming back. I never knew he did this. He never said anything to me about his involvement. I trusted him and he betrayed me. He took my whole world from me. My son came before anybody. I never knew anything, unquote. She likely posted this because Taylor was under a massive scrutiny. You know, if people did not think that she killed him, they at minimum blamed her for him being missing, and then they later blamed him, you know, her for his death. A week after his arrest, the 911 call was released, and it, you know, it showed that Nicholas, uh, Nicholson, Taylor Nicholson, relayed to police what Rhodes had told her in this 911 call that, you know, she was awoken, that he was awoken by a knock at the door, and that when he answered, a woman who claimed to be Amari's paternal aunt took the boy. And Nicholas Sin said that she was confused as to how the woman would have found them because nobody knows where they live. 11 minutes later, at 7.12 a.m., the police then called Rhodes, who explained that he didn't know who took Amari or which direction they went when they left the Emerald Suites complex. Quote, I had no idea she was even coming over here, unquote. And he said this in, you know, a shaky voice when asked about the woman he claimed took Amari. He said, quote, ma'am, I don't know, unquote. 
The same day she reported her son missing, you know, uh, Taylor flew back to Las Vegas and she called 911 again at about 2.58 p.m. to ask police why no Amber Alert had been issued for Amari. Quote, I don't understand why there's been no Amber Alert all morning while he's been gone for a half the day. She also said that he can be out of state by now. Clark County Sheriff Joe Lombardi had said Amari's case did not meet the requirements necessary to issue such an alert in Nevada. Uh, those requirements included a specific information about an abductor or the abductor's vehicle, and police had neither. According to Rhodes' arrest report, Nicholson told Rhodes days before Amari's disappearance that she was breaking up with him. So, Terrell told police that Taylor, uh, days prior to her son mis- you know, disappearing, um, you know, that she broke up with him. Amari's maternal grandmother has said that the boy was an angel who always had a smile on his face. She also told reporters that she did see bruises on Amari and that she called CPS because she believed that Rhodes was harming the boy, but that CPS never investigated. She claimed that she bought her daughter and Amari a plane ticket to Colorado, but that last minute her daughter decided to leave Amari behind. Amari's father traveled from Lerino to Las Vegas with relatives to visit a makeshift memorial at the Emerald Suites Complex and to attend Terrell Rhodes' court hearing. He said, quote, He was a beautiful spirit. I love him, and I always will. I want justice for him and everybody involved, unquote. Taylor also went to Rhodes' first court hearing, and when she came out, she briefly spoke with reporters. She did cry, and she did seem pretty devastated. The Clark County's um, coroner's office said that the official cause of death for two-year-old Amari Nicholson was homicide by unspecified means. Now, fast forward to June of 2021, Taylor Nicholson, Amari's mother, 21 years old, was arrested on three charges of soliciting or engaging in prostitution and possessing a deadly weapon. According to her arrest report, Taylor was met by undercover officers at MGM Grand. They made conversation and the officers bought her a drink. During their conversation, they discussed exchanging money for sexual services. While walking to the hotel room with three undercover officers, one of the officers identified himself and then placed her under arrest. The report stated that her purse contained condoms and brass knuckles. That exact same day, Terrell Rhodes appeared in court and prosecutors declined to pursue the death penalty in this murder case. Uh, why? (laughs) He beat a two-year-old boy for peeing himself, then disposed of his body which was left out for days in all of the Las Vegas elements. And then he tried to grab a gun and did get it from the officer before saying he wanted to die. Why not pursue the death penalty? Maybe they rather have him suffer in prison. Just a thought. Amari was a precious little boy whose community gathered by the thousands to search for him and later to memorialize him. He touched the hearts of many people, and I do feel the mother has some blame here. But at the same time, did she know he was capable of murder? I mean, do we walk around considering or thinking the people closest to us are capable of that and not only murder but the murder of a two-year-old i do wonder why she would leave her son behind he was so young and should have been with his mother why the last minute change especially if this allegation that she broke up with him a few days prior and you guys are arguing why would you leave this child 
with him. For someone like myself, who <laughs> leaves her kids with basically no one, literally, um, you know, this would have never happened uh, where I left the state and left all behind any small child of mine. I won't even go a town over, never mind an entire state. Why did Grandma step in, you know, when she, you know, she claims that she called CPS on her own daughter, right? But then her daughter flew there without her grandson. And, you know, she knew that this baby was with Terrell. Why didn't she step in? I mean, I guess, what could she do, right? It's not her child. And she had just been recently attacked by a dog and apparently had surgery. But still, why was this not an immediate concern that this child was left behind in another state with this man? <sighs> we can point fingers and we can blame all day long. But at the end of the day, Terrell Rhodes brutally beat that baby forcefully enough for it to kill him. A grown-ass man who let himself get so mad and so full of rage at a two-year-old that he lost complete control over himself and took the life of this sweet baby. Amari was important, and he had a very long life ahead of him. He barely had just gotten started in his life, and now he's gone. But... His name needs to be heard, and his story needs to be told, so that he's never forgotten about. So until next time, I'll see you soon.